We are doing Psalm 1412 from the Fundamentals of Chapter 14. Right now, these last three problems, 14, let's, I think I did uh, 8, 9, and now we're doing 12. Um, you know, they're dealing with power, okay, which is just force times velocity. As long as they're going the same direction or in opposite directions, we're going to get a value. Um, so let's, let's, let's get started with this one. So the reason I picked this one too, too, because I, I only chose the three out of like the six that they give us in the fundamental problems, and it's because they it it brings back an old friend of ours, which is you know establishing a, a datum, right, and then finding the relative velocities of each of each uh, like particle. All right. Well, that's the way I, that's the way I approached it. Okay. So at the instant shown. Point P on the cable has a velocity of velocity uh, VP equals 12 meters per second, which is increasing at a rate of AP 6 meters per second squared. Determine the power input of the motor uh, to the motor at this instant as it operates. So we know that it operates with an efficiency of 0 0.8. The mass of the block A, let's just say MA, is 50 kilograms, right? And if you did, if you watched 14.9, we had a similar problem, but we didn't have any acceleration, so it was a little easier. But now we actually have acceleration, so we can't just assume that, you know, there's, um, you know, the tensions, um, you know, like, the, the, the tension here is going to equal to the weight of um, block A. Okay, and, and, and we'll do this right now. So, what I have here is saying, or what I ha what I did was, um, I said, you know, this is L1, this thing, and then also this is L1. So this is L1, L1 here. Okay. Because as as uh, the motor pulls in the rope, both of the two L ones are gonna, you know, they're gonna um, they're gonna be pulled up, or this pulley that's holding A is gonna be pulled upwards, like over here, right? And these two Ls that I just said L one and L one, they're gonna remain the same. They're gonna be uh, equal uh, lengths. Okay, so. I can say LA, LB, and then LC, and, we know, and then LA and LB are going to be equal to the same thing, and like like this, okay? But you, you know that those two are going to be equal to the same thing, okay? So that's why I just said, like, let's say L1, and this is L1. The rope that's going to be different than those two is going to be this one over here, and I called it L2, okay, so this is L2, okay. So remember, when we did those datum problems, we said if we have one rope, that means one equation. So I have 2L1 plus um, L2 equals the length of that rope, okay. Now if I do this, I say one, one time derivative, I get 2V1 plus A2 equals zero. Wow. 2v1 plus v2 equals zero. I jumped my jump jumped the gun there. And then 2a1 plus a2 equals zero. This just tells me I, I just wanted to establish a relationship between the accelerations of the you know the cables on the first pulley and the little pulley and then the acceleration uh, that we're given at point P which is six meters per second going down. Okay, so when we isolate A1, right, we're going to get minus A2 divided by 2. Plug in, remember, my coordinate system, my, my default coordinate system is always this one. Okay, so when I plug in the value for A2 here, which is 6 meters per second squared, okay, so I I'm given that my V2 is minus 12 meters per second, and then my A2 
is minus 6 meters per second squared. Okay, so when I plug it in, I'm going to end up with a positive value here, which is 3 meters per second squared. Okay, because as P goes downwards with an acceleration of 6 meters per second squared, the points along L, the two L1s, the two sections of rope L1, are going to be accelerating upwards. Okay, just remember, just try to visualize what's happening to the system before you even do the math, just so you can, okay, the acceleration should be going up, and then if you end up getting a negative sign, that means, okay, my intuition was wrong, it's actually going downwards. Okay, so this is key to this problem, is finding this acceleration. All right, and, and the clues that kind of led me there is because I was given the acceleration at point P. Um, and also, let's say, let's say I, I, I didn't go, you know, I, I didn't go there right away. And I just said, okay, let me look at, let me look at uh, this pulley, okay? Let me look at the free body diagram of this pulley, okay? I have some tension, one, some tension, uh, one, because remember that the, the pulley is going to be, the tension along that rope is going to be the same throughout. And then I have the weight of A, which is 50 times 9.81. Okay, so if you if this was your first um, you know your first approach, you would have gotten stuck somewhere because you would have said, okay, the force is in the y direction for that free body diagram. You can't say it's zero, okay, because it's not a constant velocity. Like in the other problem that we just did, which is 14.9, there was a constant velocity, and we could assume that we could assume this, but in this case we can't. So we, we know it has to be the all the forces have to equal m times acceleration. And you might have been like, okay, let's, let's just try it. 2t1 minus um, what's that? 50 times 9.81 minus 491 490.5 equals 50 times a. And then you would have been like Shoot! I don't have the I don't have a. Um, so and then yeah. So then you, you have to solve for it somehow. Okay. So this is the one approach to doing it. All right. So when we do this, we plug in. You know, this is a one. All right, because remember, we're looking at the accelerations here, at any of these points and they're all accelerating with acceleration A1 okay so when we solve for T1 because we already have everything except T1 when we solve for that we end up getting 320.25 newtons alright so what does that mean if we have the tension on this rope is 320.25 newtons that means the tension along the entire rope I'm going to highlight highlight it in purple you know the tension along this whole entire rope is 320.25 all right what what can we do with this well we can get the power the input power, or sorry, the output power, because we're trying to solve for the input. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, we know that the power output of this is going to be the force that motor is exerting. So that motor is causing a, a force of 320.25 times the velocity. Okay, at point P. So force at point P is 320.25 times the velocity at point P, which is 12. Okay, and technically this is, um, you know, the, these are vectors. This is a dot product. 
So this is like negative, the force is pointing downward, so it's negative 320.25 dotted with, uh, sorry, minus 320.25 J dotted with minus 12 J. So when you dot those together, you end up with a positive um, value. You end up with a positive. So remember, the dot product will give you a scalar, right? Um, and then we end up getting, let's see, we end up getting 3843. Three. And because we're in SI, we know that this is watts. Okay. So it's the output power by that motor. And then we want to get the input power. So we know that this is we know that the efficiency is equal to what's being output by that motor divided by the input power by that motor. Okay. So solving for that. We get 3843 divided by 0.8, and we get 4803.75. That's in watts. And then that's it, and that's all. Um, yeah, so it, it, these are pretty straightforward. Um, just you remember, remember, you guys have a repertoire of like information now or tools to solve a lot of problems different ways. So, in this case, you can do the datum, uh, establish a datum, and then solve it the way I did it. Um, or let's or using free body diagrams. Uh, I didn't. I don't know if the energy method will be easier to do here. Um, that's something you could try. But yeah. Um, don't forget, don't overcomplicate the problem. Um, and then, yeah, let's, let's push on to the next few problems. All right, guys, thanks for your time and attention. I hope this video helped. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, just drop them down below. I'll try to get back to you. Don't forget to like and comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it.